Welcome to the Coffee with Karen podcast, a weekly chat show discussing everything from holistic health to current affairs, from a mental, physical and spiritual perspective. Get your weekly cup of positivity with a sprinkling of woo-woo. So welcome to a Coffee with Karen. A cup of positivity with just a sprinkling of woo-woo, where, um, whereas the last few weeks, I think the listeners will definitely see a, a slight progression more towards the, uh, the woo-woo. So we're, we're, we're putting in a bit of a couple of tablespoons, I think, now. So <laughs> uh, Each week, our guests will discuss uh, topics. It's either around mental health, physical health, holistic health, I would say from either a mental, physical or spiritual perspective or any combination of all three. Um, your host, my name is Karen Roberts. I uh, personally tend to help people within this area get their business sort of off the ground. Um, so today uh, we have my guest. Well, I'm going to allow her to introduce herself. I would definitely say it's, it is it is all three mental, mm. physical and spiritual, but definitely a little bit more woo-woo. So, Latoya, mm-hmm. if you could um, share with the listeners a little bit about who you are sure. and what you do and share a mm. bit of your story, please. Sure. It's definitely a splash of woo-woo, I think, or a, a big dousing. Um, but like you said, it does incorporate all three, our emotional, mental, physical and spiritual bodies. Um But my name's Latoya and I'm a spiritual mentor and also intuitive healer. Um, I guess all of this started through my own personal journey. So um, I was raised in a family and in a childhood where I just never felt like I fit. I didn't have a voice. I was always questioning... um, like just wondering, there had to be more. I didn't, my mum and I didn't connect. My dad and I didn't connect. It was it was a really lonely place. So I started to seek externally outside of that. Um, that led me to abusive relationships. So um, pregnancy trauma, birth trauma, sexual assault, rape, all kinds of, um, I guess, big teachings that I can reflect upon now and after my fourth son was born I found myself um, in a place of self-harm and I hated myself so much and I just I didn't want to be here anymore but in that moment I kind of something came over me and I stood back and just went there has to be more to life and if there is another woman that's sitting alone feeling the way that I am right now I need to pull myself together because I need to be a voice for her. I need to give light and shine light upon these dark moments and these challenges and traumas throughout our lives um, so that others know that they're not on their own, that these dark feelings and times and and moments happen to others as well. Um, So I did and I've spent the past six years in shadow work and in a child healing and I've gone from a place of such self-hatred to the most liberating and freeing unconditional love of who I am Um, and I've never experienced that from from anybody before so I I didn't even know it was possible Um, so now I've made that my path and my purpose and I help mentor women who are struggling, who can't seem to find a light or a way out of a situation or does, don't understand why they keep calling in the same relationships or the same friendships or the same exchanges. Um, and they're kind of just sitting there going, what is going on? There has to be more. Why me? And I guess we go to those, the roots of our healing journeys. So from a spiritual perspective, we go all the way back to our inner child and we dissect all of those conditioned beliefs, the, you know, the stories that subconsciously play in our mind that we've been told up until this point and we're not even aware of. It's just that voice going in the back of our minds. Um, So we go through that but from a mirrored perspective as well. Wow. yeah, <laughs> and and it's it, it's what what I find interesting. Um, 
a little bit sad, but interesting that th this does, it happens more often than not, right? There are lots of women out yeah. there that have gone through uh, sim similar struggles. And, and it's interesting that um, a lot of people are sort of coming to this idea that this work needs to be done. Yes. Although it's not something that's going to be pleasant facing in the beginning, but it mm. is necessary because, I mean, <clears throat> what is it? I think I, uh, the other day we, we have something around sixty to 70,000 thoughts a day. Yeah. And they reckon 95% of those are probably the same thoughts that we had yesterday. So when we are told these things that our thoughts create our reality and people dismiss it, well, yeah. it actually makes sense. If, if if something's happened a long time ago, some kind of trauma, and out of 60 to 70,000 thoughts a day, 95% of them are the same ones from the day before and the day before and the day before, then it would make sense then that yeah. a lot of people are or feel the perception is that they're stuck in That's a situation right. because the process is exactly the same. So there seems to need to have a pattern interrupter to, to break it to then, so then what you're doing is going back and healing uh, mm. and changing maybe how they think and feel about things because yeah. I suppose it's quite fascinating really that, you know, weirdly all the stuff that we go through, we wouldn't be the person that we are now. That's right, and that's what our dharma is, you know. That's why we're here. That's what our soul chose to experience in order to get us to this level of awareness or consciousness or even our path and our purpose and what we're here to do and to create and shine a light on. Um, and like you said, healing, like I know that word is used a lot and I'm trying to even refrain from using it myself because that implies that something is broken. Yes, you're so not. right. Yeah. We're not broken. It For me, I see it as like an undoing of morality. It's really just stripping away and letting all of those layers fall back of what we've been told is right or wrong, but just honouring and accepting every single thing and feeling and emotion and all that we are in that very moment because that's all we really have. Um, and like you said, our thoughts create our reality. So if we're not working on those traumas and we're not understanding where they've come from or how to process them or how to allow them to move out throughout our body um then that is our reality we're keeping ourselves bound to that karmic wheel over and over again until we get to that point where we have that awareness level of awareness and go okay there has to be something that I'm like vibrationally calling in or that an essence that I'm holding within myself that keeps this, these people, these relationships, these experiences coming to me? What is it that I'm not learning? What am I not understanding? Um, and it's like the law of mirrors, like the law of attraction, you know, like attracts like, yeah. that type of thing. So it's just a way to get off that karmic wheel. But yeah. it's not as simple as a mindset a mindset shift when when you're in that deep and dark you've got to go to those depths and understand the um like the deeper darker parts of ourselves and meet them with love and acceptance and awareness before we can then start rewiring our our mindset right. i mean it makes so much sense because i suppose um you know we 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 otherwise we 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 just not going to move forward and i think a lot of people may misinterpret or misunderstand the whole philosophy philosophy behind whether you call it law of attraction karma whatever it's not it's not that the it, it's not bad people attract bad things it doesn't work That's like right. that it's yeah. it's it's it, that whole feeling place of mm. any anything that's negative whether you're feeling shame guilt um sadness anger any of these negative, it doesn't make mean that you're bad. It just means that no. you're you're in that low low vibration, and you're going to be attracting more more of the same. It's it's fascinating that you just said there, and I hundred percent agree. And it's and that's a realization for me that I'm repeating, you know, saying the word healing because because I, yeah. I do agree. None of us are broken. We're all burnt, no. born absolutely perfect, that's and we right. are, I suppose, the sum of our own 
choices and experiences, but it's how we deal with all of this moving yes. forward that is. And people just don't, they don't have to, nobody needs to feel like they are a victim because you're not. <laughs> yeah. And, but I suppose, you know, in, in general, you know, most human beings, we, we run away from pain. It is a natural response yeah. as well. Yeah. So for people out there, this is, is a perfectly natural human um, way of dealing with things until somebody like Latoya comes along and makes you aware that, you know, there is, you know, that it, it makes you aware that you can change it because cause yeah. and effect, cause and effect. So be the cause rather <laughs> than yeah. reacting, having, having the effect happen. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. The, the other thing is, you know, we're not going to heal through ignorance and the spiritual community has a lot of phrases um, which don't sit right with me and my teachings and my practice. Like, for example, the victim mentality. Um, that for me is we need to honour every single one of our emotions. There is not one that's negative or positive. They are an emotion. They're not who we are. They're just moving through us. So if we're suppressing that and putting this guilt upon, you know, oh, you're wallowing in victim mode or you're sitting in victim mode, then we're suppressing that, we're, you know, pushing that to the bottom and we're not allowing ourselves to fully embrace, accept and feel it. Um, and I always say to my clients, there is not an emotion that's wrong. You can hate somebody and you can love them and feel this burning rage all at the same time. Just allow it to move through you in a way that feels good to you. Obviously, respectfully, you're not going to inflict harm upon anybody but allow that to move don't don't push it down with guilt and so many women I speak to are like I can't get angry about that or I feel so bad because I snapped like we uh, we as women are allowed to feel anger and it's a good healthy um thing at least we're not keeping that alive within our energetic emotional bodies uh absolutely I think I I think you've hit the nail on the head there um I truly believe truly believe that a lot of people, um, you know, as you think and feel it, it, it has to manifest through you, through yeah. through your body. So I do believe that a lot, uh, dare I say, a lot of illnesses, ailments, autoimmune diseases are, are stemming from, mm. maybe not 100%, there's other aspects going on, but oh. in general, the most powerful part of that will be suppressed emotion. Absolutely. Uh, anger it uh, sort of turned inwards. And yeah. so, you know, like, you know, the, the all the old sayings that come up like, you know, if you don't forgive, I mean, you can mm. be angry at them, let it pass and that's then right. forgive because otherwise it's yeah. like you drinking poison and expecting them to uh, to suffer from it. Uh, and, right. and I see that so much because people, again, this perception from society, whatever, that we're, we've we've got to hold it together and, yeah. you know, we've got to be strong and I'm not going to let, I'm not going to let it affect me, but we're human. <laughs> That's right. I've had a, the, um, a similar experience. After my fourth son was born, I was told I had arthritis in both my knees and that I'd be in a wheelchair in 10 years. Um, he offered cortisone injections and I declined and I went through and did so much energetic and emotional healing because my pregnancy and my birth was the most traumatic experience of my life and literally had a scan maybe 12 months later, just over 12 months later, gone, completely gone. And I knew I could feel it in my thighs. I knew it wasn't my knees. I knew that it had only come on when I fell pregnant with my fourth boy so I've experienced that and I, I can feel even when I'm carrying financial load or, you know, and there's certain parts of the body that you can feel that in and they correspond with different emotions or different um, struggles. So I definitely agree with that. Yeah, and because I, I think the thoughts are sort of, you know, f to do with the mind and feelings are to do with the body. That's right. Yeah. It's, it's it's where the body uh, the body holds it, and and I, and I do hope that think people are I think coming to this understanding now. I think they've for 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 the last few years, five ten years maybe, they've sort of had this understanding that the mind is connected to the 
body. And now I think people are actually realising that they're spiritual as well. That's right. Maybe it's actually all three, not just two out of the three. Maybe it's all three that we, have an yeah. effect. Yeah, we are multidimensional beings, right? Yeah. So yeah. many layers to us, yeah. And, and yes, it is, I suppose, and, and maybe it is a probably more of a cultural thing and probably so probably not for everyone around the world but definitely um Brits Australians Americans this well Brits maybe more this whole stiff upper lip uh malarkey has been going on for way too long where it's it's you know that it's not proper to show any kind of emotion mm. and it does seem such a shame because yeah that there's women are going to be suffering and men yeah. uh, it's yeah, not just the women right. but you know in yeah. general with this kind mm. of thing um but it is a natural response isn't it we we want to avoid pain so maybe and and for the listeners that maybe don't have you know, haven't really heard about what shadow work is sure. can you explain a little bit about what shadow work is yeah sure so I can even I'll give you an example so my last um, marriage was an abusive marriage and when we separated I had so much anger towards him but this wasn't an isolated incident so I started to reflect upon my past partners and my situation with him and I decided to put a mirror out because they say you know um, our partners or our friendships or those people we come across are direct mirrors to what either needs healing within us or we need to reflect upon. Um, and I sat there and tried to figure out stripping away everything that he had done to me but bringing a deeper awareness to it. Where was I abusing myself? And that came across in self-sabotage. Every time I allowed that behaviour, I was abusing myself by keeping myself in that situation. I was abusing myself in the way that I continued to stay, that I allowed it to chip away at my self-worth, that I didn't believe I was worthy of anything other than that, that I thought I just had to tolerate that because that's part of being in a marriage is accepting people's, you know, like all parts of people. Um, and I started to realise I was abusing myself in the way that I would put myself down. There were so many layers to the abusive patterning and behaviour and it actually underneath the abuse it stemmed from abandonment it was the way I abandoned abandoned my voice as a child I abandoned who I was as a child in order to be loved and kept by my mom I was constantly seeking external validation which is also a form of abuse you know we're we're constantly shutting ourselves down from our true nature and forming to some mold that we think we have to fit into in order to be loved in order to be kept in order to be like a boxed version of what woman is or what a wife is or a sister is or you know we're conforming basically um and so shadow work is just bringing a deeper layer layer of awareness but upon self-reflection so it's really shifting that perspective this is what's happened to me but where can I possibly shift that perspective turn the mirror back inward and figure out where is this essence within me is there a part of myself that I really need to bring up to the surface take a good look at meet with love and acceptance so that I can shift and hop off this karmic wheel um, because all of my relationships were like that. It, and I just, I chose everybody over myself every single time um, up until the point where I couldn't do it anymore. And, you know, the the teachings were brutal along the way, but once I got to that end part, there was no, you know, you couldn't ignore it any longer. Um, and I think that's why I'm so passionate about sharing this work is because I don't want people to ignore it and get to that big explosive undoing. I want them to be able to have this level of awareness and start to make those small changes so that we're not keeping ourselves bound to struggle and suffering and toxic patterns and getting to those points of just total eruption. Mm. It's, it's interesting though, isn't it, that in general, we do tend to wait until it's yes. things are at the work. Like with anything, you know, mm -hmm. um, people will wait until it's 
it's really obvious that they're ill until they go to the doctor, until they, yeah. they do something about it. People, I would, um, I was a sports therapist for 27 years and I'd, I'd, I'd see people and they'd say, I've had this shoulder pain for the last year. And I think, yeah, are yeah. you like crazy, man? If I had a shoulder pain for a, for a few days, I'm I'm going to get it sorted out. But in general, people, it will be things I suppose we can get very comfortable. Yeah. And the comfort zone, although it feels comfortable, is a very dangerous place to be. But, you know, unless things are life-threatening, people don't tend to make the change. Like, yeah. so, and, and I've done it myself, um, eh, almost like waiting for the relationship to get th- too mm. abusive or to actually almost like waiting for the violence yeah for a reason to because well it's not that bad you know you sort of uh, try to justify things or like you say you know you think oh well you know I've made my bed I best yeah. lay in it all these things that again st- like you said earlier about yeah. creating stories in your head and you think well you know it was only a push or it was only this so you know it didn't really yeah. hurt me that's right and it it, it it it's crazy when you're out of it obviously looking back in you think why did I stay for yes uh, but it does seem to be that as human beings we have this terrible habit of waiting until things are really at their lowest point until we it's it's almost like make that decision that yeah. you are worth more rather than waiting till you've got you're absolutely on the floor until you make a decision but it's it seems yeah. to be in the just making the decision that's yeah. when things change yeah but the foundation of it is just our self-worth and like you said we have to hold those beliefs that we are infinite beings and Everything that we desire is available to us. We don't have to settle, sacrifice, sabotage. It really comes back to a relationship with self. And if you believe that you are worthy of more or you believe in that relationship that you crave and you desire, then that's the vibration you're putting out there. But as, as, you know, and that's why I say we go all the way back to the roots and figure out why we are this way and where it has come from because we come here with that confidence, with that power, with that knowing, and then we are conditioned and for better lack of the word, domesticated, right? Yeah, to believe away. That's it, yeah. And then we carry that through with us as adults and we sit there and then we start to doubt ourselves, we question ourselves, we sit there and go, oh, yeah, but he said he didn't really get that angry. Maybe he didn't get angry. Maybe I was overreacting, you know, and, again, it comes back to that worth, that doubt, that, and it it is. And that's why this work is so important because you can't, you are the foundation, like you are the creator. So if we don't invest our time in that, and so many of my clients have said this at the beginning, they go, oh, I really want to do it, but I just don't have the time. Okay. So you put time where you want success. You put time which you know into what's of value and importance to you if you want to keep going around on that karmic wheel that's obviously not of importance to you right now um Mm. but I always say that you create time time is available to you you make that space for something that's of importance to you and if you want to stop attracting those relationships if you want more than one-sided friendships if you want to feel incredible in the body that you're in then create that space, make that time because it all comes down to you. No one's coming in to pull you up or to save you. This is this is oh. inner work for a reason, you know. It, it, that is just such a true comment. Nobody's coming to save you. And, again, no. I, think, I think that just goes back to the self, like you said earlier about the self-worth, is yeah. we have been conditioned through whatever, society, the way we've been brought up, that – self-care is a luxury yes and that and especially as you know I'm not I'm not <laughs> I'm not having a go at the guys I'm just saying it. <laughs> I, I'm, I, I'm not a guy so I can't talk from their perspective I'm a woman yeah. but I'm talking from my perspective as a mother and you know you've, you've got to look after everybody else first so self-care 
has been perceived yeah. as though, well, you're being selfish. What do you mean? You're taking time out for yourself. Whereas, you yeah. know, it's like we, we, life is just so full of all these contradictory sayings because then mm-hmm. you're like, well, you cannot give from an empty cup. You know, you, right. you, you're you on an airplane and they give you the oxygen mask. You've got to put the oxygen mask on yourself first before you can help yeah. others. But yeah. there's something, there's, I, and, I, and I don't know where it comes from, Really, but there's somehow where well, what I see is women as women, they feel like they should come last. There's this yeah. screwed up thought process. That, so for them to make time for themselves, but you and I know, Latoya, that we can. You're right. We can all make you know, yeah. the, the inner work is the work, and we could all set the alarm thirty minutes before everybody else gets up, or yeah. or whatever. We yeah. Turn the TV off for crying out loud. You know, we can all make time. Again, we get caught up. And again, look, I'm not saying that I don't do this because I know I do, but awareness is is step one, right? It's these stories we tell ourselves. That's right. Yeah. I would, uh, and I, something that I have, I would say, fairly recently got over this whole thing of, well, I'm I'm just busy. I'm too busy. I'm busy Mm. being busy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but Do you know what we sit there and we say, I wonder where it's coming from? And if, of course it's ancestral, but here's a reflect into shadow work, right? Who's keeping that alive? We are. We have the power to stop that and to go, I'm going to release the shame and the guilt of what our ancestors have believed self-care or self-love is. But like that shadow is taking awareness back, taking that power back and going, that may have been the story 20 years ago, but it's not mine. And I'm going to own that because I've been keeping myself in guilt or in shame or in like, you know, um, the energy of lack from me choosing myself above doing the dishes or taking the kids up, you know, like just putting yourself first. We're keeping that alive. We're keeping that lower vibration alive. So really, Absolutely. it's all on us. Absolutely. Yeah. We have the choice. We can change. We can make, make the change today. I've actually got, I should have met, I've just got some lovely um, pink, obviously, because it's got much pink Bluetooth um, speakers, because those awful things that go in your ears, I'd like that at night and then one falls out and it's an awful wow. sound. So I've just bought some lovely um earphone so the sound now my meditation first thing in the morning oh. and last thing at night is um is fantastic and see before I would have said that's a you know oh, I, I don't need to invest in some new you know because that's not important but yeah. it's it's the most important absolutely thing. I yeah. believe now it's the one thing that we that I must do consistently First thing in the morning, last thing at night. Um, if you know, unless unless like you you don't want things to change, that's it. And you know, I'm a single mom of four kids. Like, and there are some nights I get the last one to bed, and it is nearly ten o'clock at night. And I am so I'm in a place now where I just know that I have to have that commitment to me because if I'm calling that in, for example, in a relationship, if I'm saying. I want a partner who's deeply committed. Then first I have to have that essence within myself. So unwavering practice at the moment, I'll get the kids to bed and 10 o'clock at night and I'm doing half an hour of yoga or, you know, 10 o'clock at night and I'm putting in an audio book or doing a meditation or running myself a bubble bath. You create time. And even though there are nights where I'm like, I just want to go to sleep, I know that if I give myself that and I you know we're re-establishing that connection of trust too that's been broken for so long when we when we do self-abandon when we stay in situations or experiences that make us feel horrible even though our whole body is saying leave or remove yourself so committing to these acts of self-care over time is rebuilding that trust within it's going to amplify those intuitive muscles and Um, strengthen that connection so that we are able to grow we are able to level up in awareness and we are able to shift these patterns of conditioning mindset and otherwise moving forward um 
So, yeah, definitely there's always time. Always time. Yeah. Um, And it's just I just find it amazing that people, the, the the biggest resistance that I see is actually just the fact that there's resistance to change because we live in such this um, instant gratification era. Yes. That people might want a different result, but they're not prepared to do anything different to get it. And you just think your conditioning, your habitual ways of being, your habitual patterns of thought, your habitual patterns of feelings have Mm. created the life up till now. That's right. If you want something different mm. you can't continue doing the same thing and expect a different result so it needs something needs to change yeah within your thoughts your feelings or whatever yeah. something yeah. needs to change but yet Absolutely. I wonder why there is so much resistance like you say people making mean stories about I haven't got time to do that I haven't got time to do that I haven't got the money to do that it doesn't cost anything you know yeah. like um why do you think there is still this so much resistance to just the fact that you've got to consciously do something a little bit different to what you have been doing? Well, that's it. You know, it does run deeper than our conscious mind. And mm. um, even though those things are negative and we don't enjoy them and they keep us bound to struggle and suffering, sometimes when it's familiar, it feels safe. and. Yeah. Change is uncomfortable. It is. And I guess you've got to pick your uncomfortable. You're either going to be uncomfortable in the struggle and, and suffering and trauma or you be uncomfortable in the undoing. Um, yeah. But it runs deeper than our conscious mind and sometimes we can't even explain why we can't make that shift. Um, you know, it's it starts off. It just, yeah, I just, suppose it is. It's all unconscious but then the flip side of that, that the change has got to start from the conscious. Yeah, absolutely. To consciously yeah. do the things, do the work, yeah. do the inner work. And that's what it is, isn't it? It's just inner work. It is, yes. But yeah. and, and again, I suppose even on a, just a physical level, um, you know, at the end of the day, our bodies are always looking to save energy. Mm. So mm. If, if they say 60 to 70,000, of our thoughts each day, 95% are automatic. Yeah. So the body is saving energy. So if you're having to change that, it's taking more energy, right? Absolutely. So even on a physical level, I suppose there is going to be a bit of resistance because the body wants to save yes. energy. So it'd rather just carry on doing things on autopilot. And yes. we go, no, we don't want this automatic response to things. We want to create a change in our lives. But the body's like, mm. <laughs> I want to go sleep. <laughs> I think our body does that to keep us safe too. I notice a lot of in my intuitive bodywork sessions um, and there's energy that, well, for example, when you're intimate with someone, their energy can store within our sacral area for up to seven years and that could be their pain, their struggle, their suffering. Um they may wow. have been having a bad day that night that we were intimate and we're exchanging that energy and it can store within our bodies, yeah, for up to seven years. So seven years. that's yeah, quite a it's, scary thought. It is, isn't it? Yeah. And I think um, that I love doing this work because there are ways to shift that. There are ways to release that. It's just, again, that awareness and, and creating that space and that commitment to you and the work and that desire, because deep down you do, you know there's more, you know there's more to life, you do desire change, but for whatever reason, again, comes back to that worth. We don't, for whatever reason, believe that we can obtain that or that we will ever find that person or that we will ever make that amount of money. Um, And our mindset is putting those blocks and limitations upon our reality when That's not who we are at all. So that's why always starting with that like shadow awareness and that shadow self and then that ripples into mindset and it makes it so much easier to progress from there. Um, I remember when I was in my deepest, darkest pit, I started reading self-help books and I was it actually ignited my anger because I was reading all of these like 
positive mantras and meditating and all this stuff. And I was like going, what is wrong with me? I cannot, there is no way that this is going to shift the pain that I'm feeling right now or the darkness that I'm sitting in. I didn't want to exist on this earth anymore. So me looking at myself in the mirror and saying, you know, life is beautiful. Isn't yeah. It's not going to work. Um, no. Affirmations will only work if they feel true to you. There and you that's go. Where, you know, that's, 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 is the bottom line, isn't it? That's it. Yeah. Like, I suppose our emotions, if, you know, we've got a scale of emotions. If you're, you know, somewhere around hope, yeah. then doing affirmations it's it's closer to it you it can lift you up to the next one but if you're down here in the depths of despair yeah nah, that's just going to irritate you isn't it because that's it. The, yeah. the two things are just not in the same vibration and it's that's too it. big a jump we cannot jump so really yeah. I suppose what you're saying to people is or oh, this is what I'm hearing from you and, and and anybody out there who who feels like the toy thinks oh, I can't do I can't do meditate and I can't do that again relax don't worry yeah. It, all it means is you need to come up the emotional scale somehow. And that That's is going to include doing some kind of shadow work, inner child work. Karma, what, 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 when you talk about karmic cycles, can you explain to the audience what a karmic cycle is? So to me, karma is cause and effect, right? And we are bound to karma with our thoughts, with our perceptions. So if we're telling ourselves, I only attract men, who hurt me or I only attract unavailable, un, emotionally unavailable men or I am always, I'm never promoted. Like those things keep us bound to karma because we're manifesting that and we're keeping us on that wheel and creating those stories over and over and over. Karma is not something that happens because you've been a crappy person. We all come here with the purest of hearts and souls Karma is what we do to ourselves. It is our own cause and effect. It's the stories we're telling ourselves. It is the abandonment that we do every single day when we choose to believe in those limits, in the fear, in the blocks. Um, it's such, it is a misinterpreted word. And, oh, totally. you know, yeah, and, 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 it, and even going back to what we were saying earlier, it, again, it's this misconception about what, Law, you know, whatever you want to call it, yes. um, that it means bad. You're bad, but our our minds, our our souls, our, our subconscious doesn't understand a negative. So this all includes listeners. If you're saying that you don't want something, you don't want the debt. Your <laughs> your subconscious just hears the debt. It doesn't hear the negative. If That's I said it. to you, do not think about pink elephant. What comes You're on the screen? That's right. Yeah, a pink elephant. So right. it can be the the things that you're pushing against mm. is actually the karma that you're attracting to you. But it's it. not because you're bad. It's just because nobody told you this and you weren't aware of it. That's now right. you're aware of it. Yeah. Working with somebody like Latoya to work through this, yeah, is going to change. change Do you know what? earth or the world is an inclusive construct so when we're putting out there what we don't want or we're vibrating those things of I can't feel this way anymore or the lower negative thought patterns we're sitting in that exclusive construct and then it's not going it's to coming, work yeah. effectively here you know we have to switch it really does but like I said, it's not as simple as mindset. And that's why it is so important to sit in those depths and honour those darker emotions that come through, not as an embodiment, but just as an observer and feel them and allow them to move through you. That It's so, so important so that you can get to that space. Your body's releasing and shedding those energies and it's going to make it easier for you to rewrite those stories that are going on in the subconscious. Ah. Uh. 100%. Otherwise, they're just going to come back. That's it. Yeah. If we if don't heal for ignorance. Yeah. If you press them, they're only going to come back up to the surface. So you think yeah. you're blocking it, but you're not. So so what I'm hearing from you is then, again, it is, and, and, and this is what 
I think even I misunderstood for a long time, thinking it's all about thought. Thought it's that is it's all about the feeling. Yes, it's all about the feeling. Yeah. So yes, it's obviously not comfortable to sit in an uncomfortable feeling. But as you said, if if it's we're not saying you know stay there you know and get get depressed no. and you know. No. Need, need medication to line. get you out of it it's a fine yeah. line isn't it allow, yeah. I suppose it's because the more you push against the more you attract it too so the more you That's can it. allow it mm-hmm. this to, it too will pass it's just a feeling so and, and then you're feeling it through your body and you're getting rid of it so you don't have That's to feel it. it again if you allow it, to it move. yeah the world is fantastic no it's not <laughs> more tip. yeah yeah, that's just proving more self disconnect too, because you are literally lying to yourself. You're going against, you know, and that's why affirmations have to feel true. Because if they don't, you're creating further that ripple of disconnect, of self abandonment. Because your body and your inner being is like, you are full of crap. Like, what oh, are you feeding me? I see it every day. You know, most people yeah. will say it's interesting. Most people have this. All right, so if I coach people, you know, more, it's more um, business, but they'll, um, I, don't know, I don't know, for some reason, six figures is the always the thing they want to go yeah. to. But I'm like, yeah, but if you've never earned more than <laughs> 30000 a year, your subconscious is saying to you, who who do you think you are? Like, yeah. Don't be so silly. You've never earned more than that. You just think it's just not, and and I, I, I'm not one for, I'm not saying, people to lower their expectations that's not what I'm saying but if there's too big a gap then it's pointless you know you've got to again I would say you've got to do the inner work to release all of that so that you can find a way to feel how it would feel if you were making six figures yeah so again it's I suppose I'm doing it in a different way yes but in yeah. a, it's the same kind of thing is to just to, to get to get rid of that because otherwise I don't care if you said that affirmation 500 times a day. Yeah. You ain't going to get there because you truly on a real subconscious level, you don't actually even believe that you can. Yeah. I always say to my clients, like get so clear on what you want, write it down. There are no limitations. Money isn't an issue. Like you are the creator, but then break it down into daily things like say for example you want to be a doctor your day one path of action could be researching medical courses like you have to break it down into ways that feel real and true to you you can't just be like I'm going to wake up tomorrow and the universe is going to put a PhD in my lap like it's not it doesn't work like that yeah Yeah. unfortunately there's time and space in this realm (laughs) but we have to show up with that commitment in order to show that we are ready and vibrationally on that level um you know and a lot of my clients come to me for relationship purposes and they go I'm waiting for my soulmate and I want you know I want this that and the other I'm like that's amazing it's good to be clear now in embody that for you like hold that essence for you take yourself on those dates that you want to be taken on like hold yourself when you're feeling low in the way that you want someone else to hold you if you want a committed partner commit to you like we have to have that essence within us for anything to manifest we have to truly believe it put ourselves in those situations, take that action. Action is so important. It doesn't just, a lot of people hear manifestation and they kind of go, yeah, cool. Like I'll, I'll claim it. I'll say what I want. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Action is imperative. Um, and I think we do, we miss a few steps, but that's society, right? Like our, our food is fast where we've got like online date. Everything is fast. Shopping yeah. is fast. So everyone wants that quick fix, that quick solution, and they kind of think that if they just put it out there, it's going to come to them. Um, we we got to move. We got to move too, you know. <laughs> got to move to yeah. I used to say to my daughters, look, nothing's going to happen whilst yeah. you're sat on that sofa. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> Not going to happen. Things could have conversations could happen if you're in the in the cafe you mm. you know things can happen so you yeah. know circle some people can be attracted but they're not coming in this house and they're not yeah. going to come and sit on the sofa with you <laughs> my friends used to say that to me when I was like I really just want to meet someone good and they're like 
Well, mate, he's not going to knock on your door delivering your Uber. Like, just get up. You've got to get out just there. You've got to get there. out yeah. there. Yeah. yeah, you've got to you've got to give the universe a bit of a hand. I mean, the universe will That's do true. it, but you know, yes. you've, you've you've got to actually. Come in an alignment somewhere that's outside of your home. <laughs> yeah. You've got to commit to you but also to the grander picture, to your desires, to your wants, to your needs, um, and hold that essence and energy within you first and foremost. Yeah. Awesome. So um, now, did I see that you've uh, – uh, you're, you're also an author, right? So yeah, can you tell I me about wrote, your book? I did. I wrote a book called Beauty in the Darkness, um, and this stemmed from my experience with self-help books. I, When I was in the thick of it, like I said, I just couldn't resonate, and I felt there was a huge gap in the market. So whilst I was going through my shadow work and my healing, I decided to write it all, um, and I speak in this story. I give a voice to the darker parts of us that we often silence or suppress or we label as negative or ugly. Um, And my whole book was all of those parts that just aren't spoken about. I talked about my struggle. I talked about suicide. I talked about abuse. I talked about my pregnancy trauma and hating my body so much. Um, But then also it kind of morphed into the steps along the way, it wasn't, so I wrote it a few years ago, so it still wasn't at to the level of awareness that I'm at now, but I think that's important, especially for people starting on the journey. Like it was just a very honest and vulnerable share of everything I'd been through, all of the things I'd felt along the way. And then the things that came up for me whilst I was diving into those shadows too, because to be honest, shadow work should come with a disclaimer, like a <laughs> very brutal disclaimer. Um, it's dark. And I remember there were times and I sat there and the universe had stripped everything from me. I no longer spoke with my family. Um, my husband had walked out. I lost friendships because they were toxic and unaligned. And I remember sitting there and thinking, I don't want to live anymore and the only person I had to reach out to was a 1-800 number and I just remember sitting there and feeling and I wrote about it in my book like my soul had left my body and yeah like I didn't I didn't want to be there um I spoke about how suicide felt like I was taking my power back because in a world that felt so out of control for me in that moment that was the one thing I could control um so well, I, it's, I guess it's the next step up, isn't it? Unfortunately, yeah. and I yeah. suppose that is the real sad thing. That's it. That anybody yeah. who has had or is having now suicidal mm-hmm. thoughts, because there are that low, that would be the next step up. But remember, there's there's another step. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to do it, right? That's it, it right. Is, but, it, but it's 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 it's. I suppose people can't understand it if they've never been that low. And, and yes, thankfully, I, I haven't been that low. However, I understand mm. that, yes, taking back control would be the next step yeah. up, the emotional yeah. scale, as long yeah. as you don't stay there and then you move again. So I suppose yeah. then your book would be um, an inspiration for many who are just feeling like there really is no way out. Yeah. Um, because there always is, you know, like anything – This too shall pass. That's right. And, you know, I did it all on my own um, and I just wrote every single step of the way and it was the most therapeutic way of navigating myself through this. Um, So I wanted to put it out there and and share that so that people can read that and realise that those thoughts they're having, they're not alone in them. And they're not horrible or dark or negative. They're just, they are what they are. And we need to honour that and love that and have compassion for ourselves when we're in those moments so that we do find the strength to keep going. Mm. Um, So, yeah, I've popped that on Amazon Kindle now and um, that's live and and ready. And I just, yeah, I'm very passionate about that. I feel like we need more voices in that in that darkness we really do we need to stop like heroizing uh heroizing um like strength is this 
like tough exterior. Vulnerability is the most incredible strength there is. And showing up filter free and just being like, I'm not okay. And Mm. I'm struggling to get through each day. And that being a voice then, you know, ripples into the lives of others who are feeling the same. And then we're stronger together. We really are. And do you think then that's very possibly the reason why then people do take that next step is because too many people are having those feelings and feeling like it's just them? Yeah. I remember scrolling through Instagram at that point in my life and just being like, what is wrong with you, Latoya? Like, why don't you have lives like this? Why don't you look like that? What, like, Instagram at that point in time for me was so detrimental because I was seeing everybody's highlight reel and looking at my own life and going, you are failing miserably. Um, so I ended up shutting down my business and transforming my Instagram into, it was like the ugly side of transformation. And I shared all of the like days I had sitting in darkness, all of the self-wallowing thoughts I was going through, that, that victim that just wanted me to show up and meet her with love. Um, because we do, we, there's not many people that talk about it. And like I said, even the authors of the books I was reading about, like, and it is so easy to forget. Like once you're on the other side, like anything really, you know, you do forget how deep and dark it was. You remember um, parts of it, but you don't actually remember the excruciating pain that it kept you in emotionally and physically. And that's why I wanted to write in the midst of it because I didn't want to get to the other side and then just gloss over it. Gloss over, yeah, which, again, I suppose is a natural thing. Again, we are Absolutely. designed, we want to avoid pain. So if we've come yeah. through that and out the other side, we don't really want to uh, talk right about it. But, you know, it is important for people out there to know that, like you say, they're not, it's not just them. And, no. And, and there is, it's okay It's okay to have those feelings. It is okay Um, because the next step is another step out of it. Yes, it's not going to happen overnight. There is a process, but that that could be the saving grace of somebody. And how awesome would that be? And just knowing that it doesn't define you. It really doesn't. Um, All of those things that just need to move through your body don't make you who you are. We just need to sit back and observe them and meet ourselves with acceptance for each unfolding moment so that we can shift it and step into, you know, our infinite being. Absolutely. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And so the you you also run a program. So can you share with us a little bit about that? Um, So it's called Infinite Goddess and it is a 10-week soul cleanse and basically we go through um, the depths of everything. We dive into our very existence, into inner child work, into shadow work. There's even a past life regression in there, which is really cool. Um, We create a wellness plan. So that is mind, body and soul. We deepen into our intuition we just and like I said I don't see it as something that's healing it's literally an undoing it's a homecoming we're coming back to our essence to our truth and letting go of all of the stories that we've been told up until this point um it's an infusion of everything we've spoken about tonight um but also with a little bit more woo-woo. So we do some ritual in there. We do, like I said, the past life regression. There's like holistic body work. Um, yeah, so 10 weeks of just liberating undoing. Awesome. And so uh, if any of the listeners, I mean, obviously I'll have all your, your details below if you're watching this on YouTube or in the blog, but to the listeners on the radio, um, if anybody wants to get in touch, how do they get in touch with you, Latoya? So my website is um, www.latoyajade.com and all of the information is on there about the program and um, the book as well and there's a contact us page. So if you just send an inquiry through, I can let you know when the next intake is. But, um, yeah. Fantastic. Well, um yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm. Uh, <laughs> like when I started this show, it was really to, uh, because I think people, a lot of people, just don't. They, 
if if they've not been in this world, that they they've never heard of shadow, so they're just not aware. So this was really designed to try and drip feed a little bit of this stuff. And if it resonates with you, the listener, then um, then please get in touch. Um, I love it. Um, I, you know, every every coach or or, or healer or, or whatever they want to call themselves that comes on the show has a, just a slightly different take on it, and I, I think it's just fantastic because I'm. You know, all for collaboration, not competition. Everybody's got yeah. a, a slightly yeah. different um, take on this, um, and it and it's all and it all works. It does. You know, it's not yeah. one. It's not. But it's never going to be a one size fits all. Um, no. And everybody will be at different stages on their journey. Mm. So, you know, wouldn't it be lovely if you didn't need this kind of work? But in general, <laughs> I would say ninety eight percent of the population needs to do this work uh, mm-hmm. and I do think we, we we put so much emphasis on the doing part yeah and then people's perception is that us on this side of things are not doing any of the doing part it's like no no you're again misinterpretation yeah, yeah. Uh, misunderstanding so hopefully um some of the listeners have, have have learned something from this because it is it's about balance and this is mm. why the show is. This is why I do the work that I do. It is the mental, the physical, um, and the yeah. spiritual. It's all got to come into balance because that's what we are right. in essence. Yeah. We're not one yeah. or the other, that's or two, it. two of one, two of them, and, well, and not, not of that one. It is at the end of the day. It's 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 all woo woo. That's it. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. If, if we break yeah. it down, it actually is all. Yeah, but we've been conditioned for it for, to focus on the physical, but the, the physical is the result. And this is this is what I don't get. This is where I do feel people have totally got it wrong, even with the cause and effect. They think that the cause is from their action, mm. and it's not. That's the effect. Yes. Yeah. So the cause could be from doing this work, changing how you feel, getting in a good feeling place, guess yeah. what? That will have a knock-on effect to what you actually do, which gets you results. But because we're such physical beings, mm. well, we think we are, sorry, I'll say that again. We're actually spiritual beings living in yeah. a physical body, but we think we're so physical using our physical senses that we think it's the doing part that is the cause, and then the results are the effect. It's the opposite. Yeah. <laughs> Just that shift in perspective, hey. And that's why I think when everyone has something different to deliver in this line of work, it is so important to soak up as many perspectives as you can because one may not resonate and then the other will vibrate vibrationally match your truth. Um, there you go. But I, do you know what? And I, But I think they're all doing the same thing. They're just yes. explaining yeah, it's it. It's different. Yes. They're just explaining to actually yeah. the bottom line where that exactly. everybody's talking about is how we feel, the mm. importance of getting rid of cortisol. You know, so if, even if they're saying it from a physical perspective, they're talking yes. about getting rid of stress. And well, that's because cortisol in the body is having this effect on that. But actually, that will stem from that's how right. you feel. Guess what? How you yeah. feel. If you're feeling good, you will get rid of cortisol. So they're all talking about the same thing. Yes. from a different point mm. but they might think that their way is the cause that's correct but we know Latoya <laughs> that it's this side of things yeah that is just... going to create the change so that the, the effect will be different and the effect to, to how we act yeah. I know for a fact I know for a fa- I've known for years and look I'm just like everybody else, I, I can get complacent and I can drip out of it and, and then I get back on track. When I'm doing the inner work consistently, because I haven't perfected it, right? It's a, yeah. it's a journey. I'll never perfect it. I'll be still no. doing it in my 80s. So yeah. I know that when I'm doing the inner work, guess what happens? I'm more productive mm. instinctively. Or you'd yes. think it's instinctive, but I know that it's because I've been doing the inner work. That's right. It's a lifelong commitment. It is oh, when it's never finished. Yeah. 
Uh, and, yeah. and because there's so many different subjects as well that you could be, uh-huh. you know, whether it's relationships or health or finance or job or career, or there's just so many different things, right? Whether yes. it's a relationship you've got with your sister or whatever, whatever, yeah. whatever, whatever. Um, yeah. it, all, it all needs a bit of work. So it does. wonderful to have you on, Natoya. Thank you so much for your time. Um, you for yeah, I can talk me. about this stuff forever because yes. I do think that this is the most important thing for everybody. Yeah, for, 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 absolutely. For, for their lives. So thank you for your time. And to the listeners then, um, I will be back next week with... Welcome to the Coffee with Karen podcast, a weekly chat show discussing everything from holistic health to current affairs, from a mental, physical and spiritual perspective. Get your weekly cup of positivity with a sprinkling of woo-woo.